Bears seemingly are done with free agency. On today's episode, me, C-Dub, and Bob are going to discuss what the Bears still need left to address after their free agent moves. We're also going to talk about what is the le- the what does success look like for the Chicago Bears with all the change and the new quarterback coming in for the 2024 season. We're going to talk about all that and more right after this. Then to Chicago Bears Central, your number one place for all Chicago Bears news and content. What's going on, Bears fans? Welcome to another episode of Chicago Bears Central, your number one spot for everything Chicago Bears related. We got Bobby, C-Dub, and I'm Hayes. We all in the building today, as we are on every Sunday, to bring you guys this content. Fellas, let's start it off at the top, man. So after a very active week one of free agency, it's been quiet as hell throughout the whole second week of free agency. We still got a, a couple of weeks left up until the draft as well. So the question I'm going to throw to you guys is, hey, how how confident do you feel right now in the changes that Ryan Poles has made? And then what do you feel is still the biggest holes left to address on this team seemingly after free agency may be done for the Chicago Bears outside of maybe some veterans who are left not not with the deal and maybe could take a one-year option for the Chicago Bulls of um, Chicago Bears? What are you guys feeling? Man? Oh, I'm feeling like the 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 pieces that he got uh, already in Ryan Poles, they, they're – I think there's some good pieces with, uh, you know, Keenan Allen. Uh, you got my man uh, Swift as well, along with uh, Ryan Bates at center. It's looking like he's going to start unless we make a move in the draft. Uh, they're pretty good. But I do think, if you go on to your second part, that the most glaring hole to me is that wide receiver depth. Uh, and and I think that uh, uh, that we need to uh, get that, that uh, fixed up as quick as possible. And either getting a, it's either it's still some free agents out there in the wide receiving room, uh, most notably like uh, like Hunter Renfro and Michael Gallup, those guys out there that could be your fourth, third wide receiver out there. Now, I'm thinking we also going to draft a receiver as well. So that'll sure up the depth of the wide receiver room, because when you look at the names we got, you got Dante Pettis, Tyler Scott and Colin Johnson. Uh uh, added on to Keenan Allen, DJ Moore, and Velas Jones. Uh, that's you know, it's really top heavy. So, so we need to add some depth on that as well. So, and also the both sides of the trenches on the defensive and offensive side. I think we probably need like one piece on each side for me, a defensive <clears throat> end or or a tackle or a center, depending on Ryan Poe's fit. Uh, thinks that needs the most work. So, um, I would say it's good, Drip. Uh, and and uh, with a little bit more work to do to make it complete. Yeah, I'm I'm right on that. I think right now the the Bears are in a good position to have a successful season. If you ask me talking about the pieces, it's pretty much everything that C Dub said. Me, I'm I'm anxious to see what how they're gonna approach the edge position. I don't know if you want to go ahead and you want to draft one. Which one is that will be? It's gonna tell me a lot on uh. If they do draft the edge on which one, Dallas Turner, Jared Verse, or Leatu Latu, yeah, that's going to be able to tell me a lot. But then you also, I want to continue to see competition on the offensive line. Keep working this thing until you figure it out. I think this is one of the most important position groups that you got to have if you want to have success with this rookie quarterback. So you got to continue to be competitive in that uh w- within that position group. So keep bringing in that competition, whether you, you know what I'm saying, you might get some guys in the later rounds like you've done in the past like Jay Tyree Carter and, hell, Braxton Jones, you know what I'm saying, some of those later round uh, O-linemen. So if you can find a way to get that or bring some old undrafted guys in, develop and battle, I'm cool with that. And then I think that wide receiver three, I think the Bears will touch it, but I'm not too confident that they're going to touch it you if, if, per se. Because I think right now they, they have a belief with these two guys, your two number ones in Keenan Allen and DJ Moore. And then Ger- Gerald Everett and Cole Komet, that's something that likes to build with that multi-set of the tight end sets that Shane Waldron likes to run. I think they will address it, but I'm not too confident that it's going to be as early as everyone thinks it will be. I can I can see where you're coming from with that. like Because typically in a Shane Waldron offense, of course, your two wide receivers get the most receptions. And then you either have your tight end or your running back usually is third in Shane Waldron's offense. He's never been where where the top three receivers are are the top three in targets or receptions under his his offense. So I know why a lot of us have thought and looked at because you can get a damn good wide receiver at number nine that the Bears may go. They could very well not address that wide receiver three in the way that people are thinking. 
because the tight ends and the running backs are, are set to get a lot of the of the targets here under Shane Waldron offense. Right. So, you know, we'll see what happens with that one. Um, I still look at edge, man. To me, you still need to do something to edge. But I, I'm starting to come around to and starting to realize, and I know, C-Dub, I don't think you're going to like this. I think as we go further and further along in this, there's a high probability Nick and Gakwe is coming back, bro. Yeah. Yeah, I think there's a, I think there's a there's a, yeah. a high think, probability see, that it's happening. I I see that coming as well. I wouldn't I wouldn't uh dispute that cuz cuz they really ain't showed much action so far. But I want to go back to the wide receiver to ask you guys a question. Mm -hmm. Um Keenan Allen, do you trust him going all the way through the season? He had an injury history. I think that's a fair question. So that I One think more. you got to bring it up cuz I think last year he dealt with a heel injury. So, and those are tricky to work with, but, uh, yeah, you can't have, if, if we going on one through 10, I'd probably give it probably like a six, a confidence level. Hey, now, with that. now with the, with the rest of these guys, do you trust them? Look, Vellis Jones Jr. Do you trust no, him? To, don't know do you even trust, trust Vellis? No, 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 nobody trusts his base. Tyler Scott. Do you trust them? We haven't, I haven't not seen yet. enough of Tyler Scott for me yeah. to trust him or not. Honestly, it's a push. I don't know how to feel about Tyler Scott, to be honest. Yeah, agree. Bro. Okay. Okay. Go I ahead. just don't. Like, it would be unfair for me to say that I don't trust him. I just, honestly, I just haven't seen enough of him personally to why I have a great feel on Tyler Scott. I just don't. Like, so, and, and the injury thing, I did want to add this color into that. Keenan Allen did say over the last four games of the season, he could have played at least two of those games. Yeah, they were kind of keeping him he out did, because of. So he did say that. So, you know, we'll see what happens there. Um, I do think he's not going to have to carry as hard, as hard of a workload. And keep in mind, even in a, a, a season where he only played 13 games, he broke his own rece receptions, crazy. number of yeah. receptions. So, mm -hmm. I mean, I, I trust him. To, I trust him when he's on, on the field. We'll see what happens with the health aspect of it. Um, so, yeah, I mean, we'll see, man. Like I said, I, to me, if Rome's there, number nine, it'll be hard for me to pass him up. But this is Ryan Pohl, so. Yeah, and I think, like, and I'm with Hayes on this because I think that you can get you can get things out of Tyler Scott and Vegas Jones, but it's all about how you set them up. Yeah. And I think that's what's going to be the one of the, the determining factors for Shane Waldron and his coaching staff because now they're bringing in a receivers coach who has, you know, a track record of, you know, developing receivers. Hopefully he can help these guys continue to develop. You know what I'm saying? Because we know last year it wasn't the last few years with Vegas Jones. How did he come in with so much promise and just fell off the face of the earth? It, that's on him as well. We're not going to say it's not on him, but it's also the coaching. You got to coach him up right and also, you know, do things schematically. So we'll see. Yeah. Um, I like Vellis, bro. I think uh, Shane Walters found a way to, put him in positions that he can be successful, like coming out the backfield, short passes, nice screens. Oh, y'all heard what I said, screens. But he can be effective <laughs> on the football field. So I ain't ready to give up on Vellis Jones. Uh, but uh, this guy, did y'all know we had a guy named Colin Johnson on the, on the wide receiver? Yeah, I think he played like the last game him. or so. I think, he played, he, I think he played like the last week or two with the Bears this season. Did he? I, I believe so. Remember. Okay. <laughs> y'all correct me if i'm wrong i do think he paid but yeah i mean listen overall the wide receiver room it is very very top heavy um but i mean those complimentary pieces we'll see the confidence level that they have in them we'll see what it comes down to the thing i want to ask you guys are how confident are we in the center position i'm not hold on hold on let me address something a tavera says we're forgetting about eq eq is technically not on the roster right he's now. not on the roster he's not on the roster he's a free agent we haven't re-signed him he's a free agent so we can't really Give him credit for being on the roster, but the center position, guys. How, how you good? Coleman Shelton, Ryan Bates are going to be competing for that starter center position. I think either way, it's an upgrade over Cody Whitehair and Lucas yeah, Patrick. Absolutely. I want to say that we, we did upgrade, which is definitely something we needed to do. But I wouldn't say neither one really has. When you look at him, you're like, hey, this is the guy at the center position. What's your confidence level there? I do believe, like you said, Drip, that we got better at that position, at the center yeah. position, but I do need do think that the Bears should go ahead and look at a young guy in the draft, one of those later picks that they have, the few that they have, and uh, get him up in there. Maybe he, he's better than what we have already, but I think uh, as Ryan Bates, be, be, uh, he probably win this competition if we don't draft anybody, but I hope, I'm just praying that they get a young guy that can grow with a young quarterback in this league. 
Agreed. But then um right to answer the first question is I don't really have much confidence yet. Me, no. I need to sit back and I gotta see this shit. Cause I thought that I well, thought it was gonna be a good idea for Cody Whitehair. He was a pro <laughs> bowler at the center and he yeah. absolutely stunk up the joint or whatever. And Lucas Patrick was somebody that never really panned out. So me, the confidence level, it's a bit shaky. Uh, I need to I need to see it. Mm-hmm. I need to see it first to believe it. And then on the flip side, I don't know. I, I'm I'm interested to see what, what is the Bears mindset, C Dub. Because typically, or at least in some cases, you want the rookie quarterback to be paired with a veteran center, right? Okay, okay. I'm not saying you don't look at center to draft, but who? I, I'm interested to see how the Bears feel about all this. You know what I'm saying? To see if they need to address this. Because I'm with you. You could get you a young guy and how these two guys become very, very close and be starters together for the foreseeable future. But how do the Bears look at it? What do you think? I think they look at it as a what are some of the uh glaring problems, the glaring fuck ups from last season? I think snapping the center the possession, snapping the ball is like something basic and elementary that should have been like one, two, three for the Bears, but it was a fucking adventure. Like every single game we had a snapping problem with the Chicago Bears. I think you need to mend that problem. That's why you bring bodies in here to compete for that position. That's why you see Ryan Bates. That's what's the other guy's name? Coleman Shelton. And by the Shelton. way, he was a starter last year. The Titan, he wasn't just a backup. He was a starter. So he started. Yeah. But Coleman so Shelton. I, but these are two guys that have been in a in a in the NFL for, for a little bit now. So now you get a young guy who who might who who knows he might be better than the both of them. Right. So I do think you for the old problems that you need to fix from last year, these is one of those. The center position must be um fix for the chicago bulls to become a competent team next season bro it gotta agree be they definitely gotta fix that for the bears um they need that and that's what i'm I'm interested to see like how 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 are the bears looking at all this do you go and pair your young quarterback with a vet or do you say we're gonna take the damn best center that, that we believe is on our board and we're just gonna have these two guys grow together with a, a veteran center being like that mentor as a backup we'll see We'll see. Yeah, yeah, and, and I like to take it back to um, Jay Cutler. What only we Olin Cruz? He was young, and when Jay Cutler got over here, I think we drafted Olin Cruz. Am I correct? I think he was here I before think that. So. It was a, he was here before that? I think too. But he was still young. He was still a young guy at that point, though. Yeah, and Cutler was still relatively young. So I think the young way can can still work if you want to go that route. You don't necessarily need a. Uh, a guy that's been in the league seven years, eight years. You can have a new young guy to go in there and be well. For sure. Hey, and, yeah. and from from what you've been getting from the Bears, do you think a do you think they looking at it like, hey, we gonna pair our young quarterback with the veteran center, or you think they more so decide like, hey, we just go if we got if we have to, or if it, the opportunity presents itself, we're gonna pair our young quarterback and grab a young center and let these two guys grow together. How you looking at that? Man, I don't, I don't know because I, the the center, the center, the starting level center prospects in this draft are all going to go in round two. We have a round three pick, so unless the Bears are going to make a move to get into the second round, I don't know if they. Maybe that's why you saw them go after two veteran but still youngish centers, right? There's mm-hmm. not like they're they're high up there that gives them another year to maybe find their starting center of the future. Um, so I, I. I with the way that they made moves to bring in Bates, to bring in Coleman, that to me signifies that they, there's at least some confidence in their ability to hold down the center position, at least for this this first year. For sure. Oh, bro. So, yeah. and, and let's not forget, too, there's still Doug Kramer out there. This is a guy yeah. that they've held on to in their practice squad for two years. So I don't know the confidence of Doug. You would, I mean, he's had injuries, too. But to me, you would think if they had any type of confidence of Doug Kramer really being a starting level center, he would have already been actually on the team last year instead of the practice squad. Right. So I don't, I don't know that one either. So yeah, yeah, that's correct. See. Yeah, because they kept Cody Whitehair on the center, and and <laughs> Kramer never got the start. So it's telling you something about Kramer. So yeah. so you right. So we'll see what happens. With that any other positions? I know we talked a lot about wide receiver, a lot about center. Um. Any any other concerns in this? I know Edge is one. Defensive tackle. Are you guys surprised? This, we'll talk a little bit about this before moving to the next one. 
Are you guys surprised we haven't seen the defensive tackle? Like, is that just them being very confident in Javon Dexter? Three tech is the most important defensive line position under Ibra Fusa system. He said it every single year since he's come in. We yet again we've gone without addressing three tech in free agency. So do we think that this is a sign that Javon Dexter is the guy that they're looking at that they feel completely confident in him starting next season? I agree. Yeah. Yeah, Drip. I think they look at Javon Dexter and, and at a lesser note, they look at Zach Pickings and you also got big billings out there. So I think they got that uh, sold up right there. And they they like what they seen from the uh, end of the season last year with uh, uh, Javon Dexter. So I think they're really happy with him and ready to see him have a, have a breakout season this upcoming season. So Yeah, agree. I think when you look at Javon Dexter, the way he ended the season when Montez Sweat got there, you seen steps forward. That you can yeah. like. And, you know, with the attention that Montez Sweat, you know, is able to draw, you got great, good uh, sightings, sightings from Billings. You've seen a little bit of Zach Pickens as well. And I think that they're going to trust themselves. I think they're going to trust themselves and trust their teachings and, you know, let these guys get them an offseason now that they know what it takes to be NFL players now and what's expected of them now. I think I think you you might have to take a seat back and look at, you know what I'm saying? Uh, Javon Dexter being that guy. I believe that's why you went out and got him. Yeah. And, and when I look at that that defensive line, I think Amontez Sweat, he's going to be solid the whole season next year. But I'm looking for J Javon Dexter, bro, to really have an impact on this season coming up, bro. Agreed. I think this this is going to be a breakout. Look for like seven sacks and stuff like that. Ooh. I ain't going to predict it yet, but he's going to be a seven. He's going to be a problem. I've been looking at his workout, his workouts over the off season and how the term everybody looks good when they when they working out and getting ready for the season. But this dude look really looks like he ready to make a, a, a jump out and to start him this season. Watch out for Dexter this season. Yeah. Bro. I mean, it's, they thought highly of him. So, I mean, if he does, then great. I mean, if you don't have to spend money on a player and then you get that player to, to develop within your system, that that's that's great. And so let's see. Javon Dexter show. He played much better. He he. Javon Dexter got better every month of the season last year. Of course. Every I agree month with of that. the season. And so there's – and then especially when uh, having a full season now with Montez Sweat out there, Billings out there as the veteran next to him, there's a reason to believe, hey, Javon Dexter can make a leap this year. And so – We'll see what happens with that one, man. Agreed. But with all the change and everything, and even the questions still around the Chicago Bears, the Bears by DraftKings and some other betting sites have, have been given a 54.5% chance to make the playoffs next season. <laughs> How you guys feeling about that? Oh, man. I, I feel good, Joe, uh, because um, – these people who make these these odds and stuff, they they know what they're doing out there. And when if you look at all the changes that the that the Bears made uh on the offense and on the on the defense, a little bit on the defense, uh signing Jalen Johnson, getting him uh signed up for the for the years to come, uh getting the wide receivers we got, getting the tight end that we got, getting a nice running back, maybe a top five running back last season in Swift. Uh, the Bears are, are set up to be one of the top teams in the NFL, and the fifty-four percent is a little low. Hell, is you talking about? I mean, you know, this, 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 seven win team, <laughs> new rookie quarterback, new offensive coordinator. I can fifty-four is actually pretty high right now, considering we don't technically have the quarterback on the roster. Right? Fact, That's high, bro. Incompetence stopped us from winning ten games last season, bro. We do not have the incompetence on this team anymore. It's true, though. No. But that team also had chemistry and continuity, which they have to build with the new quarterback and a new staff this year. As that well, is so. the one thing with the quarterback. Yeah, quarter so okay. Yeah, I'm good with I'm good with where is that? I ain't gonna lie to you. I ain't finna look. We gotta see who this quarterback finna be. <laughs> we gotta see if these guys gonna accept this young man, and they gotta put it on wax to me. It's right where the, if you want to be ranked higher, you want people to believe in you more. Put it on wax. Put it on the field. Put it in the win column. So that's how I'm looking at it. They right where they need to be. They have a chance. Now go out there and do something about it.
I, I think that's what it all comes down. Like, I love that they're giving the chance because the Bears have improved drastically. When you look at how many how many big leads we gave up last year, how many times that our offensive defense didn't play or couldn't perform on the, at, uh, well in the same games, there's a lot of reason to think that the Bears are going to make a considerable step up next year, regardless. Of, and that's why I, I hear people like, well, it, it's Caleb, you can't put that expectation on Caleb. Every time, I'm going to say this every time because I need y'all to understand. The Bear, we're talking about the expectation as a team. Right now, the team, especially where that defense is, this is a, a, a team that has more than enough talent to contend for, it, at, at very least, a wild card spot. We're not saying they're going to win the division, right? We're not no. saying that. But to, to they, they should be contending for a wild card spot next season. You went out and made veteran moves. You didn't bring in guys that are one, two years in the league. We got veterans who have been doing this for three, four years. You look at Everett, you look at Swift, you you look at Keenan Allen, you brought in veterans. These guys ain't here to spend one year spinning the wheel and not making the playoffs. These are moves to get your team to be making the playoffs. That's what that is. And so because of that, and you kept this core together in that secondary, that secondary is one of, as a matter of fact, is there a better young secondary in the NFL than the, than the Chicago Bears right now? I like the Chiefs, but I think it I'll was the Chiefs, but they just let me go. So yeah, that, that, no, that, which is the dumbest thing I heard all fucking week. It's the dumbest shit. I don't Bro, know. every you know, offseason there's win the Super Bowl. There's a team yeah. that does some shit that you're just looking like. Are you just? Are you dumb? <laughs> are you dumb? <laughs> like the dumb? Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I I look at this and I'm like, we got the best young secondary in the you NFL. Do. Honestly, yes, yes. And the way that they all complement each other as well, like bringing in Bayard, who I know is a vet. He's not. He's not young. He's 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 accelerating at the age of that yeah. secondary. But like as a player to be there for two years while you find your next starting safety, he him and Jaquan Brisker are going to complement each other so right. damn well. Yeah, and just and to add to that, the depth is amazing as well too yeah. with uh Smith. Uh, you could call Kyler Gordon a depth piece as well because he's the he's in that guy. nickel though he thrives yeah, in the nickel. Yeah, you know, you know if you don't do the usual standard two cornerback starting, so I think the depth and overall the Bears got the best uh young secondary in the league. Absolutely, hey, we on our way, man. We yeah. on our way for sure. Except the old old guy by yard, but he's still good too. Old Listen, guy. I'm telling, I'm telling, C Dub, I think you're gonna be really impressed by Bar, bro. Uh, you First gotta of all, get ready. With, with, with Bayard too, bro. One thing about him, go and watch. That motherfucker hits hard. Bro. He hit hard, yeah. bro. There's gonna yeah, be some people yeah. that hey, and we already know Jaquan Brisket. We probably and we're probably gonna have one of the hardest hitting because listen, Tyreek Stevenson also is a motherfucker who surprised yeah. me last year with some of the oh, hits he had. He is physical, bro. Yeah. Is he is yeah. he the most was he the most physical? Uh no, it's Jaquan Brisket. Forget that question. Uh, yeah, I was about to, no, he's not as physical <laughs> as Jaquan, but <laughs> he's right up there. So I really like what we have there in that secondary. And so that brings us to the last topic for today and the last question. What does success look like for the Chicago Bears in 2024? Mm -mm. Success for the Chicago Bears in 2024. First of all, we need to see a competent offense and a competent play caller on the sidelines for the Chicago Bears. We need a complimentary football on the field. We must see progression from the quarterback position all season long and getting to the playoffs. It ultimately comes down to this, getting to the playoffs. I think that's the that's the trajectory oh. we were we were going on uh, from last season, and it doesn't stop if we trade uh, change the quarterback, which we are going to do. So, getting to the playoffs. Yeah, <clears throat> it's it's all okay. I just went when I seen Hayes present this to me. I just came up with a series of questions, and the Bears got to answer the damn questions. Can you okay. win within the vision? Within mm. the division, you can't be getting spanked within the division. At the minimum, you should be 500, three and three versus your own division. You need to answer the question Is Caleb that guy? Is Jaden Daniels that guy? Did you make the right decision with your quarterback? Is he going to continue to build and move on and get better as time goes on? Is the offense better? Did the defense remain good? That's the number of questions I got. And the, big, the biggest one. Did you make the playoffs? And if not, why not? Was it injuries? Like, if you don't make the playoffs, it, it's some cer certain circumstances, situations you can understand. But don't tell me you ain't making the playoffs because y'all still blowing games. Mm. So come out here and handle business. That's what it's going to be about for the Chicago Bears. Y'all made y'all. C-Dub said it yesterday. And he said it perfectly. Ryan Pose made the decision. It ain't no bailing them out now. Mm -mm. 
We, we supposed to be moving in the right direction for a reason to win the North and never give it back. We still ain't won the North, but we need to be charging and moving in that direction. What's the next step in that direction? Playoffs. Let's go. Yeah. I agree with that. Wholeheartedly agree with that. So, you know, and, and we got things that we've improved on already. The way I look at it, we talked about the secondary. We've talked about the defensive line. I know the defensive lines. I just saw a comment. Somebody said we need to improve the trenches on both sides. I think people forget just how good this defensive line performed last year after the addition of Montez Sweat. Yes. We we it, we we stepped up considerably, and it's funny how much gravity that one player has. But what? How does how does uh, Javon Dexter step up? Who do we get to to be on the opposite side? of Montez Sweat in the other edge position. Those are some questions that need some clarity as well, but we already seen that defensive line helped the linebacking core be better, which then helped also the secondary be better. Our defense is the thing that I'm not worried about at all, and maybe that confidence turns out to be false confidence once the season starts and the lights are on, but right now, God damn it, I'm riding with our goddamn defense. I love what we have on the defensive side Great. of the ball. The offense. The thing with the offense is, and I get it, we we needed depth there. This offensive line did not stay healthy. We didn't. I don't think we we had what maybe one or two games where our whole projected starting yeah, offensive true. line true. healthy. And then on yeah. top of that, let's keep in mind Cody Whitehair was in that projected starting. We've already upgraded from that, so it's difficult to bet on health, especially on that that uh, that offensive line because those are guys who are the most physical sometimes, and they get banged up every single play. But we've added depth there as well. Would I like to see a true starting level senator? Absolutely. Do I want to see a tackle come in and push Braxton Jones? Absolutely. We'll see if that happens in the draft or not. But I still am still have a level of confidence. I'm not fully confident in this offensive line, but I have a level of confidence because, listen, you got Darnell Wright, you got Tevin Jenkins. Those two motherfuckers can stay healthy. And yeah. Braxton Jones can take a little bit of a step up. It, 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 it already is going to improve you there. So, um, But I think expectations for me is playing for something. We need Thank to be you. competing for a wild card spot. If we don't make it, it depends on why we don't make it to what Bobby said. But this is not a season where we're spinning our wheels just hoping for seven wins. That's not what the fuck the season's no. coming into. So success for me is the Bears being better than what they were last season. And being better than what they were last season, guess what? Is Even with everything that we shitted, out, shitted on last season, the Bears were still in the run for a playoff spot. <laughs> they still so were. You, you need to be contender for that. And that's the way that I look at it, man. Yeah, yeah. I'm just I'm just thinking about the Montez. Remember the first game that he played, Montez Sweat, and we came in here. Y'all calm down, cause you had people in the chat like, "Oh, big big pickup for Montez Sweat," cause he ain't have any sacks. We're like, yeah. dude, his impact is judged more than the sacks. And look what this dude did. He turned Justin Jones into a. <laughs> he was a demon at the Montez. He got just, <laughs> hey, hey, Justin yeah, Jones hey. Need, need, need to call up Montez and be like, thank you, brother, for that contract he signed. Because listen, <laughs> Justin Jones before the addition of Montez Sweat looked like Dookie. Bro, you know, he, he was, was up here. So he looked okay. But <laughs> after the addition of Montez Sweat, it's like, oh, this nigga could play. Sorry. This dude can play. <laughs> that motherfucker was putting up zeros yeah. uh, drip on games, bro. Like, yeah. I want people to respect that man, Montez Sweat. I might be close to the best player on this team. Is he the best player on this team, Montez yeah. Sweat? Yeah, he might be the best player. DJ Moore. DJ Moore. The best I was about to say, DJ Moore, Keenan Allen, when he's healthy, those are damn yeah. good players as well. Yeah, um, sure. But, but it's good, good to even have here. that to talk about. <laughs> yeah. that's, it's that's good to have that many names at the top to where you got to talk about it. We got a super chat to get to. King Booker World, uh, thank you for supporting the channel. Playoffs and 24 points per game. Hey, listen, that's do y'all realize that Caleb Williams, if he averages 250 yards per game, he would break the single season <laughs> record for the Chicago Bears. Like that's how that's that's how how we are. I, I got in an argument with somebody in the comments about like the Bears never developed a, a great quarterback. He was like, "How can we never develop a, a great quarterback?" Excuse me, Jim McMahon. I said, "If you trying to convince what? me Jim McMahon was a great quarterback because he won a Super Bowl, your mama's stupid." That is all I got to say to you, bro. Your mama's an idiot. Like, come For on. Real, he never responded after that because I'm like, bro, I said a great quarterback, and your response was, I see your great quarterback. I got, I raised you, Jim McMahon. Oh, you lost, oh, bro. Like, what, what are we talking about? <laughs> Definitely bro, lost. What? <laughs> 
Like, it, like what I are we talking about? Average like two hundred yards per game, bro. I don't give a like, shit, bro. bro. Like, like hey. Jim Jim McMahon was the definition of a game manager. Now, don't yes, get me wrong. Yes, yes. Like, you got to give him credit for what he was able to accomplish. But come on, bro. Like, let's let's let's, like, let's be clear, bro. Like, yes. and that had to be Jay Cutler, Sid Sid Luck, Sid uh, Luckman, bro. It had to be one of the two that had the record. It got to be one of those. Cause we ain't got nothing else. <laughs> That's funny. That yeah, bro. Our, listen, our uh, our uh, our history of quarterbacks. So Jay Cutler has the record. Well, that's overall for his career. Let's see if I can find single season. I think single he. I season. think he is a sing, single season. He's gonna be single season. He gotta be. It's like yeah. thirty six hundred or something like that. It's something yeah, that's that's him. him. <laughs> that's him. We just it's like Jay Cutler, bro. Him. Like thirty six hundred. Ja- no, no, it's actually not. Eric Kramer. 3,838 what? yards. What? <laughs> this is how bad it is. Mitch Trubinsky and Rex Grossman are top 10 of, of single season passing records for the Chicago Bears. Damn, it's been bad, bro. That's how bad it's been. Number two, three, four, and five are all seasons by Jay Cutler. It's Mitch, it's Mitch and Rex after that. Come on, Kay. He ain't even get no hell. He ain't even kill. <laughs> Jim Harbaugh is in the top 10, bro. Come on, man. What we oh, doing? come on, bro. Damn, bro. It's bad, bro. This kid, look what this kid got to uh, live up to, bro. He going <laughs> to pass this in about three years if, he, if he's good enough. He going to beat all the records, bro. It's no tough, means. bro. Our history at quarterback has been tough. I see a super uh, – I know there's a super chat we passed up. Here we yeah, go. Yeah, we definitely. Uh I love our weapons and the way Waldron can spread the ball. If Caleb is who we think he is, he'll have the, the best QB. We'll have the Q, best QB in the division, possibly the conference. Get me a three tech and someone to push Scott. Here's the thing. I'm not expecting Caleb to be the best quarterback in the division in year one, but I do want to see flashes of that, that we can see, hey, this guy definitely can take the division. That's what I want to see. Okay. Jordan Love, I, listen, I got to give, I hate giving credit to Cheese. says, y'all don't understand. I'm a Bears fan through and through. Giving any type of praise to Packers literally makes my skin itch. But Jordan Love proved me, proved all my doubt on him wrong last season with the way he did. Play. I got to yeah. give him yeah. Yeah, that weasel can play. Uh, but, but uh, <laughs> shout uh, out to Barry, man. I checked on Barry too. Barry said he's good, he's just uh been working, bro. So, there oh, you okay, why you shout out Barry. to Barry, bro. Um, Caleb Williams think he's the best quarterback in the world right now. Bro. I want him to think that uh, he think he's the best in the world right yeah. now. So, I love that confidence. Let's see how it works out in this first year in the NFL. But this dude. Ooh, he got he got some history. He gotta he gotta just destroy for us because we always looking for Superman, bro. That's our problem. We always looking for somebody to save that position, and it's a shame. But it is what it is. He gotta save that position for us. He gotta save you know it on me. <laughs> but hey, hey, maybe maybe the football guys are on our side. <laughs> Shit, <laughs> not maybe. for once. Maybe. maybe. Hey, Maybe. it's it's a lot of weird things that have been happening in Chicago Bears these last few years. Number one pick, you trade that, you get DJ Moore. And the way that you get the number one pick initially is crazy anyway, because shout out to Lovey Smith. <laughs> 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 Somebody who was a part of that. Still a, a loyal Chicago Bear. I don't care what yeah, nobody yeah, say. Bro. Lovey knew what he was me? doing. He Seven and ten, and you got the first, the first round, the first overall pick again? Come on, man. There's some luck yeah, that involved. Was great, great. You gotta get lucky. So hopefully the luck is about to hit. <laughs> Ashton says, What do we do if the if if we draft someone other than Caleb? I already told y'all my plan. If the Bears trade the number one pick and draft Jaden or any other I'm just getting on here and laughing for the for 10 minutes straight. <laughs> I, am I, I said it. That is the complete anarchist. Uh, and I love and listen, like I've said before, I just want to see the Bears get the decision right. Whatever that decision is. If it ends up being right, do that. But I, for all, for everybody, I would just be laughing my ass off for about ten minutes straight. How would you yeah. guys react if we drafted the quarterback other than Kate? First, I'll be like, "What are you on, right? What is your plan?" I cannot read you. You unreadable, bro. Like, why? Okay, we gonna ride with it, but I'm gonna be like, "Damn, that's crazy." As it hell. better, bro. If that's it's, crazy, look, I can I can take drafting Jaden Daniels. I cannot mm-hmm. take drafting no damn JJ McCarthy. Or no. just, oh my God. I'm he good. Be if he do I'm good. fire him, bro. <laughs> uh-uh. I'm good on that. Right after if, the draft. If he it cannot ain't do Caleb, that. I gotta go Jaden Daniels. 
You go, you tell him you gonna go get Drake, Drake May. Look, I don't know what he's gonna be in the NFL. I'm not gonna be happy if they draft him. I don't know no. what JJ McCarthy's gonna be in the NFL. I would no. not be happy if they draft him. Bro, bro. <laughs> I need to hear drip. What bro. if they draft JJ McCarthy? <laughs> <laughs> all that shit getting destroyed it's, it's, right there. All, all that like shit. This. making rounds right now. All I can say is this: if the Bears draft JJ McCarthy, they trade down and draft JJ McCarthy. There will be a video posted on this channel, and the video will have the ether beat behind it. Is all I will say. <laughs> for real. Because you if can you go draft JJ McCarthy, what no cap for the cap fields. No lie. <laughs> Petty bro. coming out, bro. <laughs> bro, that's bro. That or Drake, man. Like, listen, and listen, I gotta say something, right? National me every single goddamn year, the national media picks their great white hope to try to put over these black quarterbacks. And I'm not necessarily saying that that's the purpose behind it. Was Drake May a really damn good college quarterback? Yes, but is is it's, it's Drake May better than Jay? There are people that are really trying to make the conversation to make to make it seem like Drake May is is better than Jay. Shut. The fuck up. That's what I got to say to y'all. Come on. Bro. Every year we do this shit where they try to pick their darling to try to push to, to, to fit a narrative. And I get it. You guys need your clicks. But come on, man. What are we doing? Drake May is not it, bro. Yeah. He's not better than those other two guys, I think. I think and notice really in that, good. I didn't say nothing about, but because he went to North Carolina, I didn't say nothing about Mitch Trubinsky because they ain't got nothing. So many Bears fans, well, we're going to draft another North Carolina. I don't give a shit about that. I give a shit about looking at, or, what did I say? When it was early in the season, Bobby, you can attest to it. When people were talking about the Bears going after quarterback, I literally, because I, I watched North Carolina football, I said, I don't know. Drake May comes up short on a lot of passes. You said that. I've been saying this shit. You said that. You I've been saying that. this shit since like week three of the season. So this ain't new. If I notice it, I know the media notice it. Why y'all trying to push Drake May as being the best? Trying to trying to make it seem like he's up there with the other quarterback uh, prospects in this draft. Come on, man. What are we talking? They trying to get JJ McCarthy to be a fifth overall pick. <laughs> <laughs> Funny is it? A fifth what? overall pick. Who go pick him fifth overall? They, That's they gonna be a laugh. The Minnesota start. Vikings is about to give up their two go first ahead. round picks go. to trade up to fifth to get him. Go oh, ahead. Let me talk. Let me talk to the Vikings. Oh, y'all should do that, bro, because he's gonna be a, a a team turning player. Do it. We do it right now, bro. He a save your team. J J do it J right now, Arthur, bro. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck are we talking about? <laughs> What the fuck we talking? Like, don't get me wrong. <laughs> Could JJ McCarthy turn into a solid ass quarterback? Yeah, but I, his his ceiling is Brock Purdy. You better have a great team around him. Yes, I agree. I agree. That's perfect, Brock Purdy. Because I'm gonna have bad. a great team around him. You got a stack team, and all, like, and you got an aging quarterback. Go and get, get you a, a JJ McCarthy. He's gonna he's gonna be able to oh, step man. right in there for you and do wonders for you. But what the Bears need. No, nah, bro, come on. Don't try to push no damn JJ McCarthy on me, bro. What is got what is goddamn he, his hair looks like uh like um boss baby. He got the boss baby swirl in the front of his head, bro. <laughs> <laughs> like, come on, bro. They, they damn, Gary, your That's list is crazy. It is yours. I'll give you that one, but your list is crazy, my guy. It's yours, I guess. <laughs> he said, I guess That's funny. <laughs> petty, petty, but yeah, Ooh. man. Listen, it, at the end of the day, it just comes down to the Bears got to make the right decision. We're at, we're at the we're at this point where it's a turning point for the Chicago Bears, and we haven't really had a competent front office for a long time. With I understand why a lot of Bears fans have questions, they have doubts, whatever it is. But let's let Ryan Poles has been cooking. Like, t tell me, so 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 he don't look like an adult <laughs> version of this. Yeah. Tell me, yeah. he don't look like an adult <laughs> version of this. <laughs> with the same oh, bro, I'm just saying, bro. That's exactly what JJ McCarthy looked like, bro. Like, hey, like, come on, man. What are we doing here? What are we talking about, y'all? <laughs> they talking <laughs> like, like Minnesota they going talking about you it, hit though. the undisputed Shannon Sharp and took your glasses. <laughs> <laughs> like, what we what are we what are we really talking about? Y'all trying to convince us that the Bears need it? Come on, bro. Like, look at this. That's oh, <laughs> what I'm saying, bro. <laughs> Would you open your door to this young man? Oh, look at that. Look at that. Would you answer your dough if somebody at your dough looking like that? Oh, <laughs> <man>. <laughs> <laughs> All right, y'all. Any last thoughts before we get up out of here? Oh, wait, we got another super chat that we haven't get got to. 
My bad. Uh, Bears will draft Arch Manning after they waste Caleb Williams. The Chicago Bears have never developed a superstar level quarterback yeah. in history. I Jesus hope that's Christ, not the case, bro. Please, no. no, no, no. I mean, listen, we got at some point we got to get off the QB carousel, bro. Ain't we no can't do way. this every three years, bro. I can't, I can't, I can't be going through this every three years. That's why I keep saying, I mean, just get the decision right, bro. Like, cause bro. if we, if we, if we in three years talking about the same shit yet again, bro, I can't do it, bro. We not, we not. I can't do it. Yeah, bro. Get this shit together. We need something sustainable, man. I would hey, not be a Bears fan if we draft Drake May. <laughs> yes, you will. I mean, the, the, the thing is, I'll still be a Bears fan, but I'm going to be going off. <laughs> yes, you are. Be you be his a Bro, we cooking every week. We cooking. Bro, what? man, my patience is not that. I'm not, listen, I'm not that strong in the Lord, bro. I'm going to be, I'm going to be flipping out every week, bro. Every time that motherfucker throw an a, a interception, I'm going to be like, this is what y'all wanted. <laughs> Somebody even left a comment the other day. They was like, hey, hey, the Bear, there's no way that the Bears draft two black quarterbacks in a row. Shut your ass up. Yeah. Oh, my you goodness. Who's that? Yeah. Bro, I, I, like some people just they just want to they just want to say shit. It's like like y'all y'all that much of losers. You just be wanting to even though it sounds stupid. You just be wanting to say shit. <laughs> bro, that's the dumbest shit ever. You pick who's the best player. Stupid ass shit, bro. That's dumb. That's crazy, bro. But anyway, any last thoughts, y'all, before we get up out of here, man? Hey, man, thanks for y'all support. We're going to continue to bring you the best uh, Bulls covers that we can that we can you do. Bring and Bulls bears. covers over here? Oh, Bears. I'm sorry, Joe. I get confused. <laughs> sorry. Uh, make sure y'all uh, like and comment. <clears throat> Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already, bro. Yeah. Hey, that's it. Tune in, man. Lock in, tune in, and uh, shout out to Bet Down, baby. We in here. Absolutely, man. We appreciate y'all. We're going to keep pushing. Only one bringing truly daily content every single day, man. I love you guys. Uh, but yeah, follow the show at Shy Bear Central. You can send us any feedback, questions, comments, concerns. Chicago Bear Central gmail.com. Lastly, if you want to leave a text message and our voicemail, 773 242 9336. We're the number one spot for everything Chicago Bears related. Shy Town up. Bear down, y'all. And yeah, Lord Crimson said it. FGB, just for the hell of it. Oh, bro. Yeah, bro. Hey, we seen that little flex y'all did on the